What's up folks, welcome to 802 Garage. This video will show you one proper method to replace a headlight connector using a replacement connector and pigtail harness. The demonstration vehicle is a first generation Subaru Impreza, but this procedure really applies to any vehicle or basically any connector. You can see this factory headlight connector has burned up and is no longer usable. To replace a connector with pigtail harness, there are some tools you'll need and others that are nice to have. You'll need something to cut the wires and something to strip the wires. These are basic wire strippers and automatic. You'll also need a crimping tool for the connectors. And yes, I do prefer crimping to soldering in this application. These are heat shrink butt connectors with waterproofing glue. You'll also want heat shrink tubing for additional protection and to tidy everything up. Some hooks and picks can be helpful on the job, a lighter or a heat gun to do all of the heat shrinking, and a utility knife comes in handy as well. Everything used in the video will be linked below, and if you use those affiliate links, it could help out the channel. That's all the tools, so let's get to work. Disconnect the battery before repairing or modifying any wiring on a vehicle. Start by getting the best access possible to your wiring. I'm going to remove the connector, and there's a captive part of the wiring down here. I'm going to pull out this tab. It's held in by these little wings so using a hook can help pull them out. With the wiring freed up I have easier access to the offending connector. Always a good idea to make sure that the new connector you get to replace it is identical to what you're replacing. To get better access to the wiring I'm going to strip back some of this old electrical tape just using this hook and then I'm going to chop off the old connector. It's no good anymore you'll see in a second. It's a good idea to start by keeping as much of the original wiring as possible. You can always cut back more later if there's an issue. As you can see and here there is not much left of this original Subaru connector. Something must have broken inside and a weak connection caused a ton of resistance generating a lot of heat and causing all of this to basically crumble. It's a good idea to check your wiring and whatever the connector plugs into to make sure there's no other failure points causing these issues. If you start blowing fuses for example don't just replace the fuse figure out what's causing it to blow. Here I'm just using a hook to strip back some of the old electrical tape covering the wiring. Be careful doing this you don't want to damage the wiring or yourself a lot of people like to use a seam ripper to remove the covering over wires. Next clip off the ends of the wires removing any bad insulation or corrosion you want nice clean wires for the repair job. Don't worry about removing any wrapping or insulation, we're going to replace it all at the end and make it look all tidy. Whether you're using an OEM or aftermarket pigtail harness, make sure the wires match in terms of size and count. The coloring isn't as important, but obviously they all need to go to the same terminal, so just make sure everything matches up. In this case, everything was identical, so we're good to go. I'm just going to clean off the wires, clip off the ends again so I have nice tidy wire to work with. Try to make sure everything is nice and clean, it will help with the splicing as well as sealing with the heat shrink waterproof connectors are going to use. I like these. They're affordable and they work very well. Choose the right size butt connector. In this case, I'll be using the 22 to 16 gauge. I believe these wires are 16, but make sure you use a size up if your particular wiring is beefier. Strip off enough insulation so bare wire reaches from the middle of the butt connector to just where the metal ends. I'm going to start with these automatic wire strippers. They're very nifty. They make the job super quick. They just aren't always as accurate as more traditional strippers. All you do is place the wire in, squeeze, and you have bare wire. I always think that's super cool. Unfortunately, I needed to strip just a little more insulation off, so I went back in with the manual strippers. Use the correct size in the jaws. Sometimes going a size up even can help make sure you don't damage the wire. You don't want to pull out any copper when you do this. Twisting the bare wire a bit can make it easier to slide into the butt connector, and you should end up with the insulation basically meeting the metal inside of the butt connector. Which tools you use don't really matter as long as you don't damage the wiring or insulation, and it doesn't matter in which order you strip, crimp, and heat shrink. However, it is possible to screw up a crimp, so that's part of why you want to make sure you have some extra wire to work with in case you have to cut everything back and start over. After stripping the wires, clean the bare copper as well. This will help make sure there's good contact inside of the butt connectors once crimped. Ideally, you should end up with shiny bare copper with no corrosion. This is definitely my favorite tool for crimping connectors. It's designed specifically for these insulated connectors. It's a ratcheting crimper. It has one-handed action, and it won't damage any insulation. This one's by Iwis. You can buy it as a kit with the connectors. Again, links below. This video is not sponsored. I just like the tool. Start by placing one side of the butt connector in the crimper and squeezing just enough so that it's held in place. It won't fall out of the ratcheting crimpers. Next, slide the wire into the butt connector until the tip of the bare wire meets the middle of the butt connector. Make sure no strands of wire have caught on the sides, and then you squeeze until it crimps all the way down. Once the crimp is completed, the tool will automatically release, and you should end up with a perfect crimp on one wire. Next, and this is very important, do a tug test. Make sure you cannot pull the wire out of the crimp. I recommend starting with a light pull and making sure the wire doesn't move at all. If it does, try recrimping first. That way you don't waste the connector. However, you should be able to pull the wire very hard without it moving at all. To finish up this connection, I'm just using a lighter on the heat shrink, and you should see some waterproofing glue squeezing out of the end. That's the first crimp complete, one half of a splice. Since there are three wires, that needs to be done five more times. The process is the same for each wire end. 
Insert a butt connector into the crimping tool, hold it in place, slide the wire in until the insulation meets the end of the metal and the bare wire is in the middle of the butt connector. Crimp it down, make sure that you've ratcheted it all the way and the tool should automatically release. Do a tug test for every wire you crimp. It's very important because loose wires could cause more resistance in the future and you might end up back here fixing the same issue again. Heat shrink the finished end of every connector and there you have it, the pigtail is ready to be spliced into the main harness. Next up is heat shrink tubing and it's very important to do this before you do any more splicing Believe me, everybody forgets this at least once. You want to select heat shrink tubing that's big enough to go over all of your connectors and also over your connector boots if you want it to look nice and tidy. Select the smallest size that will fit over everything you want protected. I'm using some basic tubing, but you can also get it in colors and with adhesive lining like the buck connectors used. The waterproof stuff is the best, but it's a bit more expensive. Links to all the options will be below. After cleaning up the wiring a bit more, I'm going to slide two pieces of heat shrink tubing over the wire so I can cover a large area and keep it well protected. Make sure you still have range of motion to work with all the wires. Then the process to splice the pigtail into the main harness is pretty much the same as adding the connectors in the first place. As you can see, I use the ratchet and crimpers to hold on to the pigtail as I insert the wire, and then I crimp it down nice and firm. Again, make sure you do a tug test, and this is where I would be careful because if you pull this out, you might have to start all over again. If the wire does seem a little loose, sometimes you can step down to the next smaller size on the crimping tool or switch to a manual crimper just to finish the job. In this case, I didn't have any issue with the ratcheting crimper and it made all the crimps nice and firm. Make sure you don't accidentally catch any of your other wires or crimps in part of the tool that you're not using. With all three wires crimped together, this headlight should work again. I'm sure there will be someone in the comments saying this should be soldered, but there are numerous reasons to crimp instead of solder. Generally, it's about corrosion, brittleness, insulation, integrity, and honestly, the skill of the person doing the job. There's less room for error with crimps. And there you have it, the finished splices. Technically, this job is done. These connections are waterproof and should ideally last the life of the vehicle, but we're going to tidy it up a bit more and add protection. Slide the heat shrink you cleverly added earlier up over the connections and the boot of the connector and shrink it down. This stuff shrinks quite a bit faster than the butt connectors do, and you just want to get it shrunk to the point where you can kind of see the outline of everything it's encapsulating. It's pretty obvious when it's done shrinking and it gives a nice finished look. Overlap any of your tubes a little bit so they give better waterproofing and abrasion protection. Here it is with the tubing shrunk. Looks pretty good and it's still flexible. The butt connectors and the heat shrink tubing provide strain relief for the wires as well. Now to cover the rest of the wiring, add protection, and make it look more like factory, we're going to wrap the harness in some electrical tape. The key here is to constantly apply some strong pulling force as you wrap around the harness with the electrical tape. This will give a tightly wrapped appearance and help prevent contaminants from getting into the harness. One trick I use to make sure the end of the tape sticks is just to hit it with a lighter quickly. It heats up the adhesive and then you can stick it down. This usually helps ensure the tape won't lift up at the end and start unraveling. Here's a glimpse at what the final product will look like, but first we need to put that tab back in down below that holds the wiring in place. And no, I don't know what these two little extra connectors are for. A lot of vehicles have options that are never installed and sometimes you'll find connectors that are just unplugged from factory. Before this headlight will work again, I need to replace the bulb that was badly burnt up. It's super easy to replace on these cars, and yeah, this bulb was literally missing a tab that burnt off. It's always a good idea to check if a component has been damaged by faulty wiring. Once the new bulb is in, it's almost time to test if everything is working. Keep in mind, even though this video is about replacing a headlight connector, it really applies to almost any connector on any vehicle. Really, you can use the tools and methods shown in this video to repair a lot of wiring on any vehicle. Just go step by step, make sure you connect the right wires, and you should have a good working product at the end. So here it is, the replaced connector with pigtail harness. It looks pretty much like factory, just with shinier electrical tape, but here's what the original looked like, just for reference. So yeah, it's pretty much a perfect match. Now we get to see after all that work, which really didn't take that long, does it work? Make sure you reconnect your battery, and... There it is, the headlight's working again. Keep in mind, as soon as you get the splices done, you can test whatever connector you're replacing, that way you don't wrap everything up before knowing it works. In this case, it was a pretty simple splice job and I was very confident, so now you know with a few simple tools, you can repair your wiring and even replace a fancy factory connector. A reminder that all these tools and products are linked below in the description, and it could help out the channel if you use those links. Job well done, it should last a long time. Please leave any comments, questions, or feedback below, and thanks for watching 802 Garage.